And guess where we are? We're on the South Bay. And we're going to be filming a show on the wonderful sailing endeavor that is going on here and has been all summer. We're going to be interviewing a couple of very interesting and lovely people and they're going to be rigging a boat for us. And then I don't know whether I'm going to be sailing with them today because I probably dropped the camera in the water, but I am excited about today. I grew up on this lake, not the South Bay. I grew up on the Canadian side of this lake and I grew up sailing. I have forgotten everything, but I've had a wonderful time getting to know these people and I hope you do too. So I'll see you when the interview starts. Well, I promised you two interesting people. So here we have Randy and Andy McGonagall, not to be confused with this, the teacher of McGonagall in Harry Potter. These are <laughs> hot off the press, wonderful people who do the sailing school here in Newport. So tell me a little bit about what you're leaning on, Randy, please. Sure, this is an Optimus Pram. We have 12 of them. An Optimus Pram? Optimus Pram. Perfect. <laughs> Optimism. But um, it is the largest sailing fleet in the world. It was designed originally for kids. There's over 400,000 of them made since 1947, I think is the number. So they've been in, you know, kids have been sailing, learning to sail on them and race on them since the 1940s. Um, it is by far the largest fleet, like I said, for kids in the world. So it's a great learning platform, it's a great racing platform, and that's why we got a bunch of these. How were you introduced to the sport yourself? Uh, <laughs> it's interesting, sir. I saw, when I was in high school, I saw a magazine called Cruising World. Oh, yes. And it was about sailing around the world, people that went long distance sailing, and it, I was intrigued. Have you, have you sailed around the world? No, I haven't, but we've sailed up and down the East Coast, from what? Florida to Massachusetts. What kind of boat do you have? We had three different boats. We started with a Catalina 27. Okay. We moved up to a Tartan 34, and our last boat was an Offshore 40, which we sold two years ago. Do you miss it? Kind of. Yes and no. Well, now that you're here in Vermont, what's the maximum boat you'd like to see on Lake Memphremagog? Oh, our boats. <laughs> <laughs> no, our kids in our boats and, and families in our boats. Um, it's you know it, it it depends on who what you want to do. Um, these boats are perfect for kids. Like I said, we've got some bigger boats over at the east side. Yeah, we'll go over there later. We'll go over there later and and show you those. We've got not our entire fleet out there. We've got three boat, five boats actually there. Um, but yeah, it's it, it it the key is to get people on the water. I don't I don't care what they're in. Um, we're also going to next year we're going to introduce. Stand up paddle boards and kayaks to our fleet. And right now you have paddle boards too. Let me just swing over and take a look at those. Uh, those are not ours. Those are actually the, um, That's the city. city's. Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec owns the pedal boats. You have a good relationship with Parks and Recs. Excellent. And uh, Mike uh, Brown and Patrick Finn have been some of the best proponents. They've become you know friends of ours. Um, yeah, they've they've been on board with us since the inception of this. When you had this inception and conception and redemption. <laughs> what started you thinking you should have this here for children? Well, and teenagers. Yeah, when we sold our boat about a month later, we bought a house in downtown Newport here. And my wife and I are avid bike riders and we were riding along the bike trail and we were just looking at the lake, you know, how beautiful it is. And there were hardly anybody on the lake. There was hardly anybody on the lake. And so we realized, you know, the lake is seriously underutilized. The town is, um, ripe for, you know, enjoying the lake, getting on the water, and then hopefully appreciation of the lake itself and maybe the health of the lake will come from that. Well, when you're familiarizing yourself in a fun way, the urge is to protect. Right. And you get help but get a little educated by being on the lake and seeing what you're dealing with. Right, and we're going to part, we're, we're in talks right now with MEMSEC. What, you better tell us all what that sure. is. Sure, MEMSEC is Memphis Magog Science and Education Center. It's run out of the gateway. Yep, John, John Aldridge. John Aldridge is the executive of that. Um, John and I and all of us have been in conversation quite a bit. Since this was our inaugural year, and we're just starting out with lessons for both adults and kids, um, it was a little early to integrate in with MEMSEC, but our intention is to, to as our kids program builds and grows, we're going we're gonna to partner with them so that we can 
provide more education about the lake itself and the history of the lake. I love that. So it'll be, you know, and, and hopefully our kids that use these boats will become stewards. Now, how many students did you have this year? Uh, so we've had over 65. I didn't. I haven't updated the, the records in about a week and a half. So we're probably close to 70 lessons for this year. So 70 students have come through. And are most of them local? Uh, yeah, predominantly they're all local, we mostly have, local. Some have traveled. Mostly we had, from the city camp. Mostly, yeah, mostly oh, from fabulous. the city camps. Yep. So they're already in an organized thing looking for something to do. Yep. Marvelous, marvelous. Well, that's a very good record for your first year. Yeah. Yeah, and so and we're continuing. We had a couple more lessons out this morning. We had some yesterday. So we're pushing, you know, we're pushing you, lessons through. You had an eight-year-old this morning and a nine-year-old? An eight, uh, no, a 12 and a 13. Oh, okay. So these boats are designed for six to 15 years old. Yeah, they're really 10 about the weight. 10 feet long? Eight feet long. Really? Yeah, they're like a bathtub. They, yes, I know. You've obviously seen my bathtub. <laughs> anyway, let's go over and watch you do the rigging now. Okay, sure. That's so good. Pull the boat out. Like you said, like I said, we've got 12 of these. We actually have 14. We have two that are on storage that were just, they're there for parts and other things. But So we've got an active fleet of 12, so a lot of kids can be on the water at once. That's fantastic. Okay. Notice how I let you do the heavy lifting? <laughs> That's what you say, <laughs> but you act like a pro. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, so this is what a pram looks like. A bathtub. And I love the fact that it's got the anti-skid flooring. Oh, yeah. yeah. And really easy rigging. for. It's a single one main sail, folks. It doesn't have a jib or spinnaker. It just has a one sail, right. uh, a centerboard, and a rudder. And off we go. Yep. Oops. Okay, so we'll just rig the sail up. Oh, they're going to rig the sail up with me now, or for me. That's wonderful. This is part of what the kids do as part of the program. They, they do everything from helping us pull the boats, grabbing the, the sails, the rudder, the centerboard, daggerboard. And then we have them, part of their lessons are to learn how to rig a boat. And how to put it, the sail away properly. Correct. It's the same material as parachute. Or it used to be, right? I'm sorry? It's the same material as parachute material. Oh, uh, it's Dacron, yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming, I don't like to, when I'm in a plane, I like to sit in my seat and not <laughs> leave it and fall out of the plane. Oh, really? Well, I can help you with that. I did it once. That was enough for me. You mean you jumped out of a plane? Yep. He I, did, I didn't. No, you didn't? No. Randy, you're a smart any, woman. The plane wasn't having any issues. So. I don't like heights. Were you in a Piper Cub? Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, they're good for that. Yeah, it had overwing, so is that... It could be, it could be anything. It could be a Piper, it could be, I mean, it could be a Cessna for all I know. Yeah, we had like four people in the pilot in there, all three were like stacked on top of each other. Yeah, it wasn't a commercial airline? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just yeah. thought I'd ask that. Yeah. yeah, so that, that was the rig. <laughs> That's that beautiful. was it. That's lovely. And then, as that you can see... slides into the slot. And then we can adjust the tension on the rig. For the sprit rig, which is what it's called. Yep. And there we go. So now it's ready to sail. All you Put need the main is... sheet on. What did you call that? Main sheet. Main sheet. And if we turn it around, I think the wind's coming out of the south right now. Oops, missed it. Um, that is such a neat... be able to show the sail, because right now it's going to be like downwind. Easy rigging. And that would be the rudder, folks. Yep, and there's... And the centerboard. And the centerboard, which is very simplistic. That's very good. Centerboard, of course, is for stabilization. Rudder for steering. Turn it this way. All you need is a little water and you'll be on your way. It's right there. Are you going in? No. <laughs> I, and you're better better suited to sail one of these than my the size of my body. <laughs> I do sail these, but I, can, I tend to have my legs out on one side and my head out of the other. Oh, that's nice. It's good ballast. <laughs> kind of. Well, that's a beautiful little boat. I'm telling you something. I think that's great. 
you got to come by and sell these. We we do send a bunch of adults out on them. We've all been out <laughs> in here in the cove. Well, that'll be about my that'll be about my speed right yeah. now because I have completely lost my sailing technique. Even with Nick, when I go out with Nick, uh, Beretta, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he said, "How to just sit there and you know think ballast and." He says, I have a way of doing everything and I don't really want you to help me. <laughs> and I'm perfectly fine with that as I sit there with my... And this is good and it's good for somebody our size too. Yeah, okay. what are you saying? We're short? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> I love it and it looks so nice and clean. And it just takes minutes to set up. That's what I love. I can't live with complications. Yeah, and the kids love it they because they can understand it. And the first day, you know, we have them, the first things we do is rig the boat. Then we set the boat up on land and then put it in different points of sail for the wind, whichever direction the wind's coming yep. from. So they can learn how the boat will sail and how they can trim the sail. It looks it like it'd be almost impossible to tip this thing. Um, I mean, we, haven't, we haven't sent anybody out in enough wind yet to do that, but that's part of our training program is going to be riding the boat. Yeah. We're gonna, you know, we'll flip it over intentionally in shallow water. Yeah, we used to stand on the center board and just Exactly, mm -hmm. and yeah. rewrite it. Not that, of course, we ever tipped it, but we did. Occasionally, we go out on the lake when the three foot waves, and my father would say, Just don't bend the mast. <laughs> and we go out there, you know, and. But the, yeah, I mean, that's. And so. for those of you who don't know what this is, when, a, when you're on the lake or in any body of water when you're sailing, if you don't. If you're sitting behind the sail, which most people do. Is imperative that you keep a view on what's coming at you. Mostly sailboats have the right of way. The slower boats always have the right of way. And uh, yet, I have seen in my life people who don't know that they're coming at you. Right. So you have to be prepared as if nobody knows you've got the right of way. Correct. Yeah, you're responsible for your own actions, even though there are rights of way and rules on the water. Um, safety is paramount. That's so. great. And that's one of the things we like about this location. Mm -hmm. It's very protective and there's minimal boat traffic. Definitely, but minimal boat traffic on the whole lake. You're well, so that, right. Right, the whole lake. And uh, well, there you go. Well, off you go, folks. I'll let you put this away now. As I actually I sail right off. <laughs> but this is where we, so just for your information, this is where we launch. It's unfortunate with a lake, you know, I'm talking, to, we've only been here, like I said, this is our third summer. But, you know, the weeds are really starting to impact the ability to launch off of here. In the early spring, late, late summer even, you know, it's still pretty open here. We can sail right up to the docks and sail pretty much right up to the landing here. Um, but in the last couple of weeks, the weeds have really come up. And so we have to tow, when we bring kids out now, like yesterday, we had to tow them out with our chase boat and then drag them out to a little bit further out yeah. of the water, and then they can jump in the pram, and they can sail around this basin. I, I totally understand that, because I live on Scott's Cove, and I sold my boats. I had a 14-foot rowboat for training, and then I had a sailboat that I had fixed up. It took me a year to fix it up. I got it beautiful, and then they built a bridge across, so I couldn't get it out, because I couldn't put my mast down every single time. But to go out on Scott's Cove when the weeds were high, I couldn't get my I couldn't get my oars in the water. Right, right, and you, yeah, you just you lose all ability. You know, the kid, these have deep center boards and the rudders. Like yesterday, you know, the kids were catching it, so they were learning how to clean off the rudder and the center board, which is a great skill. But um, Talk it just makes it a little bit harder later in the summer. Um, so maybe there's there, there may be some things we can do. I know they're going to put out some new docks here, but I don't know if they're going to go significantly further out. Yeah. Well, MWA has this uh, weed pulling thing for oh, yeah. for the uh, not weeds like this. Yeah. But for the uh, Phragmites. Phragmites. And, mm -hmm. and when I was growing up, we dreaded weeds, and there were fewer of them. Now there are so many because of the temperature change in the water and yep. everything else. But I know down in Pennsylvania, where we're from, a lot of the field runoff from farms fuels the growth of weeds. So nitrogen gets into the water from mm -hmm. runoff from the farm fields. So that helps weeds grow, at least down in Pennsylvania. It's probably the same here, but. Yeah, um, we're, we're pretty careful with our phosphate in, yeah. input, but I totally get that. Well, I'll follow you now, my dears, and we'll start the show in another place, probably. Yeah, yeah. We're going over to the East Side restaurant right now, where I must say the food is phenomenal and Dina and her crew do a wonderful job. Uh, but we're not going to eat, not that I know of. We're going over to see the grown-up sailing part uh, with a big boat and 
various other things. I'll see you over there. Newport Community Sailing, sailing lessons, rentals. And when you see a wind like this, doesn't it make you wish you were out on the lake? Come on over and check it out. So right now we are at the sailing center on the main lake beside the east side restaurant in Newport, Vermont. And this is the main, well, it's not really the main lake. The main lake is way the heck over to the right. But right here, you can see how gorgeous it would be to get into a sailboat and just appreciate the water, the view, and then come right back to the east side and go in for a fantastic meal. So what we're going to do now is ask Randy and Andy McGonagall a little bit more about this particular part of it. So who, who are the people who run this institution of yours? So the board, I'm the president and founder. So I came up with the idea three summers ago. Um, Andy is my wife. She's also a board member. I can let you speak. So. I am a board member and uh, I do not hold a um, office. An office, thank you. So I am just a member at large, but also a founder with Randy, and we felt like the lake was underutilized. So we actually, Randy went out and recruited the rest of our board. Who are they? Michael Croto is the vice chair, or vice president. Um, he's also a graphic designer, so he came up with these wonderful logos. That's right. That are on our boats, that Let me are just... everywhere. Let me see. They're not, They're not on, on that, that boat. <laughs> okay, Kelby, you might want to cut out that little jog, but you never know. Newport Sailing Center, Vermont.org. That's where you contact if you want the information. Perfect. Oh, now we're back. No problem. And Mike Croto, and then who else? Rick Ofer Chase is one of our other uh, board members. He is secretary and he is executive director of the Newport Downtown Development. He's been wonderful to help us promote this program. Scott Grimes, a recent uh, transplant, probably three years ago from Boston area, and originally Former from Texas. Texas. Yes. Correct. Austin, uh, Texas. Yes, correct. Austin to Boston to Newport. <laughs> well, you know, it's, a, it's an upward climb, but he finally reached the pinnacle, the apogee of, <laughs> of gloriousness. I think technically he's from Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth. Oh, uh, okay. But that's okay. <laughs> and uh, finally, we've got Kelly Starr, who is uh, executive director of Adaptive Sports Program. I think she's amazing. Yeah, and she, she is she's amazing. incredible. Um, I met her. Uh, a number of us are <laughs> ski instructors at Jay during the winter. Kelly runs the program uh, at Jay for Adaptive uh, Sports. So I met her through there, and it was a good combination that we join forces and offer adaptive sports as well through our program. She did a tipsy talk last winter. She did. And it was incredible. For Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this show, if you go to Tipsy Talks, Newport, Vermont, and look up adaptive sports, Kelly Starr, you will see something that you, you might not have known existed, and it's phenomenal. And I would say all of the tipsy talks that I saw were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. In fact, our camera person. Yes. Didn't. Oh yeah, you were there at mine, <laughs> eh? We were, we were at all of them, I think. I was. Well, all of them. Missed, all of them one. at. I think all. Well, we missed one at, at uh, Jasper's, but we yeah. didn't go to the others. Yeah, well, that's good because I think that's a great program, and that's run by Patrick Hurley, and uh, we have got some of the most amazing young people who've moved into town. I mean, Scott, I believe his uh, alma mater, I shall not be mentioned here, but he's definitely Ivy League. And they've all brought their brains with them, and they love Newport and everything it has to offer. Rickleford Chase is trying to make this into a four-season community, a go-to place, a fantastic place for anything you want to do season after season after season. And we will do it. I mean, that's... Well, well there's no question. Yeah, and we're this all committed. Is part of it. Yeah, this is, this is all part of it. So we're part of Rick's vision for... Um, we have to intertwine with that vision. I do, uh, too. So, and if that's our board right now, we're looking for another board member. We had to have one step down because, because his personal business took off and he really needed to focus on that. So we need seven board members right now, we're at six, but we'll be, we're looking hard for an enthusiastic, helpful uh, sailor. Who are some of the sponsors? I mean, so everybody listen to this because you have no idea who put the money in for this glory. Go ahead, okay, well, we have 19 boats and we've only had to buy one, so. Thank you especially to the Fisher's Island Yacht Club for donating our Optimist fleet. More about them? They are a yacht club on Long Island and they were refreshing their fleet 
and chose to donate their old fleet to us. So that was a connection through Michael Croteau, who moved here from Long Island. He grew born and raised in Newport, but then lived on Long Island. Uh, so he developed that connection and they gave us some boats. We're very appreciative. And other people have also been generous. Very generous with money. Um, Vermont have, Electric Co-op? Vermont Electric Co-op, the state of Vermont, Pomerlo Real Estate, private donors, and I think that's did I miss anyone? Not that I'm... What, I've, what uh, Randy and Andy have missed is the long list of people who haven't called in to help with this. If you live on the lake or if you have children who want to learn how to sail or you're rich, why don't you give these folks a call and say, excuse me, but I'd really like to help because this lake needs a lot of academic improvement, a lot of people out on the lake in completely healthy ways without polluting it. And learn to learn to be stewards of the lake. Stewards so of the lake. Of the lake, you know, for what it is, and make it better than it is today. You know, sailing is a good way to, like you said, not pollute the lake and enjoy it. Oh, such a great in thing. In a healthy way. Yeah, and yeah. you don't need a gas tank. Well, you might have a kicker on the back of a big boat, but that's nothing either. You can get an electric kicker. Yes, you can, yeah. and that's our that's, that's our intent, our long term plan. intent. Yeah. Yep. We're also really appreciative of the city of Newport. Oh yes. And the relationship with Parks and Recreation, Mike Brown, and also the Dockmaster, Patrick. Um, Patrick Finn. Patrick Finn. What a great name for somebody working on a lake. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and Linda Joy Sullivan, yes, our mayor. They've been incredibly Our, our wonderful supportive. mayor has been, yeah, they've all been so helpful. Her husband, Alan, has helped us with writing our some of our legal documents, helping us review those. So there's been an outpouring of support from the community. Well, like you said, we could use more, of course. Of course. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't mind making a pitch for that because I grew up on the lake and I grew up sailing. And I'm a terrible sailor right now. I used to be pretty good, but I'm absolutely pathetic right now. I can tell you, I can tell you what to do, but I'm not coordinated enough to do it. <laughs> so let's go and visit some of the boats you have here. Sure. So here's a couple sunfish that we've got that have been donated, of course. Which are us. Whoops. And, um, yeah, so we didn't put them in the water this year just because we really started in the middle of early August, or yep. excuse me, early July. And um, we just, we've been mostly focused on the kids' programs, which we were looking at the prams earlier. And we've been focused on these boats over here that we actually do have in the water. So we've got two FJs. Now, the FJs, why don't you tell me a little bit about the FJs? Sure, they're, they're, a, well, they're a sporty boat. <laughs> um, they're 15 foot. Uh, these were donated from one... Uh, member or one local here um, and they're just they're they're in great shape they're um, boats for people who are very comfortable with sailing small dinghies that are uh, quick uh, these are quick yeah, they're quick they cut right through the water yeah and, it, and they're, they're they're not a boat that you relax on these are boats that you actively sail but on a day like today, you could be planing on a boat like this. Oh, I right? know. So, how fast? How fast? It's a beautiful them. day. It's a you wonderful know, day. On I'm the looking. Water. I'm looking at the hull, and I'm wondering how fast you have to go to get up on plane. What about 12 miles an hour? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. 12 to 15. Probably. Probably. I wonder if it could pull a skier, because I'd be behind that rascal. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Good>. lovely. <laughs> and then we'll go and look at our biggest boat. We also have two O'Day 19s that we haven't put in the water because we just haven't had a reason to. We've been busy enough with these boats. Next year, we'll have those in the water. They'll be available for rentals um, and charter cruises, as well as lessons. Yeah, well, I was just going to focus on the boat you have over here to the right. A little bit of a sail required on that one, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> that did not pass, um, not FAA, but what are Coast they? Guard. Coast Guard. Um, the examples, so they couldn't, couldn't uh, get it to the people who originally bought it in Dubai, I believe. Yeah, somebody built it and they just never, it was never stable enough for them to take guests out on. So. Well, half the people... Gonna have, they're going to have a wedding tomorrow, I believe, on it. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, so they are using it, unfortunately. It's in the water. Um, Dina, by the way, bought it, folks, if you want to know yeah, Dina yeah. Gray. She is the most amazing woman in Newport. All right, this is a hunter. And this is the one boat that we did buy. Now, you did buy this boat from where and... What is the history behind it? Southern Connecticut is where we picked it up. We saw it advertised. Uh, Michael Croto and I drove down there, took the boat over, and um, decided to purchase it. So we 
kind of drug it back here and it's probably the probably the only thing from Connecticut around here who didn't <laughs> clear cut ten acres. <laughs> and this was uh, money from the state of Vermont. The money Vermont from the state of Vermont. Recreation grant that we received. Yep. Vermont Outdoor Recreation Grant that you received. Now let me guess. I can't even imagine. What, yeah. And uh, this is a wonderful platform to learn to sail or just to go out for an afternoon. It's a great boat. It's a great boat. It's easy to sail. It's got roller frilling jib. The main has just the main sheet. It doesn't have a traveler. It's not complicated. Um, there's no backstay, backstay on it or topping lift for the, the boom. Yeah. There's a kicker that keeps the boom up, yep. so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, go ahead, Vanna go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Vanna White, go for it. This is the kicker. This is the boom. Normally there would be a line or a louder, louder. line that runs. Whoa! <laughs> I got that on film. Hooray! Are you okay, Are you okay Andy? Sorry, it's rolly today. Um, Thank you, Andy. There'd be a line running back here, and that's when Randy was saying there's no backstay. Uh, it just makes it more simple. It is. And how deep does the centerboard go? It goes three and a half feet. Yep. And oh, oh they pulled the they pulled the center. Uh, they pulled the rudder out as well. So it's a it's a it's a stable boat. It's a very light boat, but it's very stable. It's easy to sail. Um, and winds over 10, 12 knots. It's a little overpowered. But who would you take out on this to teach? Um, oh, it could you could take kids, but it all, generally it's going to be. Oops. Generally we would take people out, adults on this, but it could be a family. Tomorrow we have a family coming out in the afternoon that's going to go on the boat. So. And do they go themselves or do you have? No, we're going to take them out. They want to learn how to sail. And tomorrow uh, we're going to be. We have two other two young um, teenagers that we may, they went out on this boat today, this morning for three hours and on lessons. We're debating what, they, they wanted to go back to the Optimus Prams. They really like selling those, but they may choose in the morning to come out here depending upon the wind. So we're flexible, we'll go on either. Um, but I, I believe they'll go on the Optimus. But this is a, this is a platform we can take anybody out on. The, the kids programs, we're ultimately going, going to want to bring all the kids that go through our programs onto the bigger boats as well, so they, they have a chance to sail them. Boats with jibs, so they get experience with them. Yeah, uh, you, you had a problem with mice eating the spinnaker. spinnaker. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll purchase a spinnaker. This it, this has all the gear to fly an asymmetrical chute, so we'll get a, we'll buy a new spinnaker this winter. Yeah. Um, with generous donations that we'll get from our followers. Of course you will. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so it, this will be a fun boat once that we can fly the spinnaker, which will be next next summer. So we'll open roughly around the 1st of June and then we close depending upon weather at, towards the end of September. Uh, the kids program obviously is when school ends to when school begins. That's when we get all of our kids predominantly. So that'll be all summer long. Yeah and as you were saying you're going to be able to sail these children right across to the gateway which is right across. I, I'm, it's too sunny I'm not sure I can focus in on it but the Gateway Center over there, where they park the, where they moor, no, where they dock the Northern Star, uh, is a phenomenal facility, and uh, John Allridge is running that, and he'll be hiring two more people, and it's going to be a, something to be reckoned with, and it'll be a, the, the center for education on the lake. It'll be like the Echo Center, only probably better because it's us. Because yeah, it's us. That's right. <laughs> it's, totally like it's us. us. Uh, yes. Yeah, so no. It's a, and John's really. He's passionate. He's driven. So it's going to be a good program. And um, I'm excited about partnering with them. We are excited about partnering with them, so that we can get the kids, you know, more informed about what we've got. These these resources. This wonderful resource. And you know. And the fun. And it might change some of their lives. Who knows? Oh. I talk to all my friends who grew up with me on the lake, and we're from all over, originally all from Montreal, but we all spend our weekends and summers here. Um, it set us on a path in life, right. and we all ended up in somewhat of a rural situation all over the country, mind you, and all over the world, but this is our gathering point. It gave us a solid foundation um, environmentally. Uh, and athletically, and I'd like to say I gained coordination from learning how to sail here, but I did not. <laughs> but I really am so grateful to both of you, the board, and all the donors, ladies and gentlemen.
gentlemen, if you're watching the show and you're interested in donating, NewportSailingVT.org will tell you all about that. You're investing in not only in Newport and one of its wonderful sports, but you'll be investing in the future of the lake, the lives of children and adults, and everything in between. And it'll just be a wonderful thing for you to do. And you don't have to donate much. An arm and a leg, you know, <laughs> uh, whatever you've got is going to help. And that's what we do in Vermont. We donate what we can and, and we make it work. So thanks very much for watching Life is Good. Thank you, Randy and Andy. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Thank you for being named so I can <laughs> rhyme them off like that. <laughs> it's great to know you, and thanks for moving to Vermont and uh, Newport especially. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Thanks yep. for watching Life is Good. I'm Heather McEwen, your ever-loving hostess, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.